everybody, I'm Richard Oldner and welcome to the channel. Please, if you like the channel, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all of this testing. And here's the question for today. Who wants their motor to make peak power at a higher engine speed? I do. All you have to do to make that happen is add boost. But wait, I know what you're thinking. Richard, aren't you the guy that said it does the same thing naturally aspirated as it does under boost? You just contradicted yourself. Well, yes and no, but wait, Richard, how can you be right on both instances? Here's why. If you have the same amount of boost at every engine speed, the power curve will look identical naturally aspirated and with boost. But if you don't have the same amount of boost at every engine speed, it's going to look different. Case in point, centrifugal supercharger has much less boost at 3000 RPM than it does at 6000 or 7000 RPM. It has what we call a rising boost curve. So that tends to make the motor want to make peak power at a higher engine speed, more power, more RPM. Who's not in on that? Let's check it out. To illustrate the effect of a rising boost curve offered by a centrifugal supercharger, and these would include the pro charger that we used here, and also the uh, Paxton, Vortec, and Torxstorm all have the same kind of design, even though the different size turbos will do different things, but not dramatically. They all pretty much have a much lower boost pressure provided at a low RPM, in this case like 3000, than they would at like 6500, which is as high as we rev this motor. So let's see what effect that boost curve, the way that it's applied, has effect, the effect that it has on making peak power on this combination. So to get things started, we started off our test with a small block Chevy. This was a 383 from Blueprint Engines. We'll go ahead and take a look at the specs of the way that we tested this. It was a low compression power adder motor, meaning that was designed to be run with nitrous or a blower or a turbo. It was nine to one. It was a 383. It had forged internals and it was equipped with a set of ASCAS Blueprint aluminum cylinder heads. It did have roller rockers. We installed a comp camshaft in it. This was a 536, 555 lift a 224, 236 degree duration and 113 degree lobe separation angle. We also installed an Edelbrock RPM air gap and 750 brawler on this thing. It was run with an MSD distributor, inch and three quarter long tube dyno headers the way that we normally do it. And then we would adjust the timing and, and jetting on this thing to optimize the power. So run in this configuration, it's not a big cam, a 224 cam basically for a 383 pretty streetable. In fact, we can see that this thing made more torque than horsepower, which gives us a pretty good indication that this is still, this combination is still on the mild side. So this one produced 446, 447 horsepower, 446.8, and did so at 5,500 RPM, made peak torque of 469.6, at 4300 rpm so good streetable rpm range kind of on the mild side here's what happened when we installed our this was a pro charger go ahead and take a look at our specs on the pro charger and then what we what we installed it with so we continued with the um the same intake manifold we replaced the brawler carburetor with an 850 blow-through carburetor because that's our kind of go-to blow-through carburetor from csu we had the csu bonnet on top of this we added a pro charger p1x supercharger with a 413 blower pulley and a 7.75 inch crank pulley. We had a, I have a radius entry that we like to use that we put on the inlet of the blower to improve, uh, improve the airflow. We installed 1.52 aluminum rockers. Yes, and then so we what we did was, I think I, on this one, I think I was trying to cure maybe a valve control issue once we put the supercharger on. But after we did that, we picked up quite a bit of power and you can see we the supercharge combination, was, and I'll go ahead and show you the boost curve after this. The supercharge combination produced 680 horsepower, 679.5 out at 5,300 RPM. So we had moved our peak power from 5,500 to 6,300. And then peak torque happened out here at 5,000 RPM, right at 600. 599.4, yeah, it looks like right at 599.4 at 5,000 RPM. So you can see the effect of the rising boost curve is because the boost is going up, 
the motor thinks it's still very efficient and wants to continue making power at a higher engine speed. But as I've said, this doesn't continue on forever. In fact, you can already see it starting to roll over because even though we have boost present, it still responds the same with the intake manifold still kind of wants to run in the same RPM range. We are just tricking it into revving a little bit higher and making peak power a little bit higher because we have a rising boost curve and more airflow. So now that we've checked out what happens on a small block, let's see what happens on a big block. Now we've taken a look at what a centrifugal supercharger will do on a small block Chevy, and actually it will do that on basically every motor. So if you've got a big block Chevy, small block Chevy, big block Ford, small block Ford, Dodge, etc., this is what a centrifugal supercharger curve and what the effect is. It, it happens to basically almost every motor because we have a rising boost curve. But let's take a look at one more example. We'll take a look this time at a big block Chevy, and this was a good one. This is actually a 496 stroker. So 454 with basically a 60 overbore and then a larger crankshaft, a 4250 crankshaft. We'll take a look at our specs here. Move this over just a little bit. So we had a Gen 5 block. We had CP Carrillo, their bullet series pistons and rods. It, they were a um, like a 22cc dome piston to bring the compression up a little bit. It had a scat crank. It was a stroker crank. We used the Comp BR300-14. It was a solid roller cam, but a fairly mild solar, solid roller cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up and you can see it, it actually works fairly well. Even You could even drive this thing on the street. We had Crane 1.73 roller rockers on it. This thing was topped with a set of Pro Max CNC ported heads. They say 355. I actually think that they were 340s. It had a Mylodon pan and winded tray assembly. Good idea on a big block. Both uh, the pan and if you can get one that has a kick out, excellent idea. And then a winded tray also on the big block Chevy. Especially on stroker versions, they tend to have oiling issues and they tend to have windage, windage issues, which can hurt both power and actually the oil curve and ultimately potentially the motor. So oiling system, very good on a big block Chevy. We had an Edelbrock Super Victor intake manifold, which we ran with a 1050 Dominator. And then as always, we adjusted the jetting and the timing. This thing ran best with 38 degrees of total timing when it was naturally aspirated. We ran on 91 pump gas. And then you can see we did jetting changes to try to optimize this. We had an MSD billet distributor. We tried it, adjusting the lash a little bit here and there. But on run in naturally aspirated trim, our 496 produced a peak of 677 horsepower, 676.5. And peak torque, although the torque was very, very flat, peak torque was 589.7. We'll call that 590 foot-pounds of torque at 5200. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we installed our centrifugal supercharger. Here is the power result of that. This was, I'm going to go ahead and zing myself all the way up here. Take a look at our test description. This was a Pro Charger, an F1A 94 supercharger, very good and certainly capable of easily supporting this kind of power. We had a 4.5 inch, these were cog pulleys, 4.5 inch blower pulley and an 8 inch crank pulley. I think it was a cog pulley. We'll have to take a look at that and see. And also was running the air to water intercooler supplied by Pro Charger. Instead of the 1050 carburetor, and Super Victor, we switched over the intake manifold so that we could run our 850 blow through carburetor from the guys at CSU. And that worked very well. So we may have seen a slight change in NA power basically going downsize in the manifold to a Victor Junior and then with our smaller carburetor, but we more than made up for it. Uh, <laughs> with the Pro Charger. And I'll go ahead and show you the, the boost curve on this thing. We can take a look at that and you can see, as always, it is a rising curve, much less power down at 3000 RPM or 3500 RPM in this case, much more at 6500 RPM. And you can see, run with the supercharger, instead of making peak, peak power at 6200, we were continuing to climb even at 6,500. In fact, this thing would have continued probably out to around 7,000. Now, just like the small block Chevy, it's not going to continue forever. It won't just continue to rise indefinitely. Eventually, it will level off. We'll run into a couple of things where the airflow is not great enough to overcome the VE of where the motor really wants to make power. And then also, ultimately, you could come to the flow limit of the supercharger itself. Let's get to our conclusion. Before we get to the conclusion, let's take a look at the rising boost curve on the supercharged big block. We started out at 3.8 PSI and rose to a peak of 11.2 PSI. 
And that's how we change the power curve. Okay guys, what do we learn from this little adventure comparing the naturally aspirated version and where it makes peak power to the supercharged version and how that increased the RPM where it made peak power because of the rising boost curve. It did it both on the small block and on the big block. In fact, it does it on 99.9% .9 of the applications that I run on. Because we have a rising boost curve, it wants to keep being efficient at higher engine speeds and make peak power at a higher RPM. So you get more power, you get more boost, yada yada, all of that works out, but is a centrifugal blower the only way to get that? It's the most normal version, but you could also do this with a turbo, but you have to have a rising boost curve. So you'd have to program in a rising boost curve or possibly have a wastegate that's too small and cannot control the turbo, and it continues to have a rising boost curve. A lot of boost controllers can do this. You just match them to RPM, you increase the boost with RPM, and away you go, and then it provides a curve not unlike a centrifugal supercharger. And if we do that, if we have more boost at more RPM, we're, wanna get, we're not only going to make more power, but we're also going to increase the engine speed where it makes more power. I'm Richard Roll. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming your way.